Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. We are live and we are broadcasting worldwide on this Sunday broadcast. It is the 25th day of August 2013. And coming up, joining us at the start of the next hour for about 20 minutes, Joe Mendez, who is one of thousands of people uh, under new federal funding and laws in California, uh, being SWAT team raided and uh, arrested and their guns taken and they're never even charged with anything and then can't find out why they've been charged. It is, it is extremely uh, Kafka-esque. Kafka, of course, is uh, uh, the term stemming from uh, the idea of being arrested and then put to death and never knowing why, why it happened to you, why you were disappeared. And even Bloomberg has the headlines out there about gun confiscation begins in California. No judge, no jury. Uh, they can just say that they say you're mentally ill and your guns uh, disappear. It's been happening to a lot of veterans. Uh, and this is all part of the persecution of American gun owners. He said that when he was in jail, uh, almost everyone in there was in there for some bogus gun charge or had been visited at their home by the SWAT teams who will call you outside about your car being stolen. Yeah, yeah there's the headline right there. Uh, California seizes guns as owners lose right to keep and bear arms. And they use different stories. Somebody broke in your car or uh, somebody stole some of your stuff. The officer needs to talk to you. You walk outside and boy, they, they take you down because they want you to know that you are basically the enemy. And if you, if you want to know how we're going to live in the rest of the country, look at California. It is the, it is the model of control. Okay, all of that said, obviously, our top story uh, is the fact that it is uh, now being announced uh, that, uh, oh, the U.S. And, 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 and NATO are going to respond now, and the Syrians did it. They nerve-gassed uh, their own population with, with no evidence. Uh, they're in a suburb of Damascus. And, of course, this happened three days ago, almost four days ago now. And BBC has been caught running a photo uh, of mass graves that were dug up and then people wrapped in sheets. So it has the image of a bunch of freshly killed people. Remember when they found some of Saddam's mass graves? Uh, well, now they've uh, used those images to say that that's the number of dead children uh, in Syria waving the bloody shirt. Now, I want to be clear here. I've noticed just info operatives on Infowars.com and PrisonPunter.com in the comments saying Alex Jones is saying no one was nerve gassed. No one was killed in Syria. I've never said that. None of my guests have said that. None of our writers have said that. Clearly, a bunch of civilians got nerve gassed. And the opposition that's been caught staging nerve gas attacks. In fact, guys, I forgot to print this. We, we had an article on Friday about it, and I forgot to send it to you. Uh, our article's titled, Yahoo Exposed Syrian Rebels Chemical False Flag. And it was a few months ago when even Yahoo confirmed that it came out that they had staged a smaller chemical attack. But I guess only killing a few dozen people didn't cut it. Uh, and I, obviously, they're the prime suspects. They've done it before. Yeah, there it is, flashback. Yahoo uncovers Syrian chemical weapons false flag in January. Well, that was eight months ago. Man, time just, time just flies. Print that off for me. Thank you. There have been three different false flags, by the way, where it was confirmed. This is the, the fourth, and I mean, it might be the Syrian government. And Santa Claus might come down my chimney December 21st as well, and Easter bunnies might, you know, come out of my, you know what, here I'd back. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us on this live Sunday edition. It is the 25th day of August 2013 on this Sunday broadcast. We're going to be here for the next two hours live as we are each and every Sunday, 4 to 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. That's uh, 2 to 4 p.m. Pacific. Broadcasting across the United States on over 80 AM and FM affiliates on the Sunday broadcast, over 160 on the weekday broadcast. Simulcasting, of course, on XM. And the internet at InfoWars.com, PrisonPlanet.com. You can find the free audio and video streams, free podcast, free iPhone and Droid apps, and so much more 
at InfoWars.com by clicking on the Listen page or by simply going to InfoWars.com forward slash show. You'll find it all right there, including the free video feed. Uh, so you can actually see us here in the studio, more than just a document cam, more than just a webcam, uh, full production with video clips, all the different articles, pieces of legislation, photographs, everything we cover so we can document it here on record uh, so that people can't sit there and deny it, the, the information we're going to be covering. A few hours ago, I went to a restaurant at, at Barton Creek Mall uh, with my... Um, mother and father, my children, and my wife after church today and was, as usual, mobbed inside the restaurant and then outside the restaurant in the, in the mall by really nice, informed, caring people. Uh, one guy was there with his girlfriend, uh, who was a former special ops guy, flying Cobra helicopters, and he was talking about uh, how many people are awake in the SF community, and it's just, it's just amazing to see how many people are awake. I'm not starting the show as I do sometimes going, hey, you know, I'm a big deal, folks. I start the show sometimes pointing out how many people come up and talk to me no matter where I go, not just here, but in England or in Honduras or it doesn't matter, or in Serbia for that matter. I just talked to some folks that were visiting family in Serbia and saw InfoWars bumper stickers and people awake there. The reason I bring that up to you is that if this many people are resonating with what, with what we say and do here each and every day, that should give everybody hope because most of you out there are obviously not a libertarian or constitutionalist or pro-liberty, uh, pro-human, pro-justice type people. Most of you are not prominent. Most of you are not known. So you don't ever get to resonate with fellow liberty lovers like I do. And I think that's the last domino to fall. Folks know that we're living under a tyranny. They know that corruption is intensifying. They know that powerful corporate interests are using big government to shut down their competition. That our enemy is crony capitalism using socialism to create a permanent peasant class. Folks get that. But they feel powerless or they feel like they can't do anything. They feel like that no one else is awake. And that is really the last domino to fall. And I had folks walking in the parking lot into the restaurant at the mall, California Pizza Kitchen. And I had people uh, in the restaurant. And I had people follow me out of the restaurant and people outside the restaurant, inside the mall. And then the people, as I walked back out to my car, come over and they were awake. They were involved. They were concerned. They had the light of consciousness and humanity in their eyes, not the dead eyes you see in so much of the zombie-like public that shuffles around like self-propelled stomachs. And they all ask me, what do you think we do? What's the solution? They're just ready for solutions. And the problem is there isn't some silver bullet out there, one thing we do. But I thought about what are solutions. We cover a lot of solutions mixed in with the broadcast, but I mean, the biggest part of the solution to this global tyranny is for all of us that are awake to wake others up and then to resist being pushed around, resist being abused, resist having our rights taken, uh, become aggressive, speak out, do little things every day, and that will create an unstoppable organic movement in the path of which nothing, nothing can stand. And so that's really what it comes down to. But I thought I need to really brainstorm with the listeners, but with myself and the crew and really cogitate, really dwell on every successful thing we've done and every successful thing that other folks have done in other nations like Iceland and you name it that has defeated the globalist. But the bottom line is this. You've got to have a spirit of liberty to be part of the animating contest of liberty, as Thomas Jefferson called it, to set brush fires in the minds of men and women everywhere. All that evil men and tyrants need to prevail and flourish is that good men do nothing, to again quote Thomas Jefferson. To quote George Washington, government is like fire, a dangerous servant, a fearful master, and must be kept under very tight control. 
we have deserted common sense. We've deserted what made America so great. Not that our country's been perfect, but it's been better than all the others stacked up against it. It's delivered more freedom and then more wealth than anybody else with only a fraction of the ideals of the founders, the flower of the Renaissance and the Enlightenment being expressed. And so if we will simply ourselves be moral, ourselves be virtuous, ourselves be strong, and, and that means aggressive. Being virtuous means you're, 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 you're focused, you're angry, you're powerful, you're going to make a stand, you're animated. The animating contest of liberty, it is a spirit, ladies and gentlemen. And, 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 and if you have the spirit of liberty in you that comes from God, nothing can stand against you. If you're an immoral nation, you will go into bondage. You don't need to be a religious person or a Christian to know that's a fact of life, of, of decadence and cycles and civilizations. And so I want the crew to remind me of this, and I want to encourage listeners as well when we open the phones up. Let's start having a solution segment every day for at least five minutes. And sometimes whole shows based on solutions. Before I come back with the incredibly off the chart, important Syrian news, uh, amazing Department of Defense teaching that the founding fathers were bad to, to military officers. Yes, it's act, Judicial Watch broke it, not InfoWars. <laughs> I wish this wasn't true, <laughs> believe me. When we break this stuff, people don't believe it. When it's on the federal sites, this is Judicial Watch. Drudge is linked to it, right-hand side of DrudgeReport.com, second story down, last time I checked. But uh, the point is, is that, yes, we have a government uh, that, that teaches that George Washington's bad. In fact, in, in the article that we wrote about the Judicial Watch article that has links to the documents, we actually have video of FEMA teaching police uh, and sheriff's deputies and firemen that uh, the founders were bad people. Uh, George Washington and Thomas Jefferson uh, are listed, by the way. <laughs> and, and, and by the way, this is not satire. Okay, I, I mean, the, the, I'm not joking. Okay, that's who runs the government. They're obviously the enemy. I mean, that's open and shut case right there. Uh, but from their perspective, people like that are bad. And you know what? If I was a tyrant, I'd be scared of George Washington too. So... <laughs> That's why nobody teaches you about George Washington, because if you've read about the real George Washington, it's beyond any any hero in a movie, folks. It's Conan the Barbarian, you know, meets, uh, meets I don't know who. We'll be right back. Resistance. It's the heart, folks. Rallying patriots worldwide. Texas is resisting the globalist across the board. You're listening to The Alex Jones Show. Is Texas all that's left of the old republic? Stand up and be counted for what you are about to receive, my friends, here in the great Church of Liberty. You know, that's what they were calling me in, um, on MSNBC a few weeks ago as the prophet of the, of the dangerous libertarian Tea Party. Newsweek said the same thing. No, I'm not a preacher, folks. I'm somebody who's desperately uh, trying to wake people up because I know how real the New World Order is, and I know the fruits of it are nightmarish. And we're going to cover... Coming up in the next hour, the article that's red-linked up on InfoWars.com by Adon Salazar, DOD training manual, extremist founding fathers would not be welcome in today's military. By the way, that's a quote. Manual lists people concerned with individual liberties, states' rights, and how to make the world a better place as potential extremists. And Adon's being conservative there. When he wrote this article yesterday, they got picked up by Drudge, and it links to Judicial Watch that sued to get these documents. Judicial Watch. I want to get their director on. I used to get them on. They are just amazing folks. That is such a great news site. We should live on that, live on that, 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 that judicial reform site. They are the kings of suing and four-year documents and Anyways, that's, it's what the uh, ACLU wishes they were. The point is, it's a very small organization, too, so hats off to them continuing to get those documents, and hats off to DrudgeReport.com for linking to our story. Uh, but you can go see it there for yourself, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and, and you read that because it's worse than what Adon says. When you actually go read the documents, it actually says it's racist to say, I've got the quote right here, that you want to make the world a better place. <laughs> That's a quote. That's funny. <laughs> it's so absurd as they go, now the racists don't wear white sheets. They talk about liberty and the republic 
and they talk about states' rights and freedom, and they talk about making the world a better, a better place. Let me find the exact place where it says that. Nowadays, instead of dressing in sheets or publicly espousing hate messages, many extremists will talk of individual liberty, states' rights, and how to make the world a better place, close quote. And, and by the way, it's not just this DOD document. It's hundreds of FBI training flyers to police that we've gotten from our sources. Now they just put them on the FBI site. Hundreds of them. Uh, it's, it's, it's DOD. It's ATF. It's all written by the Southern Poverty Law Center and ADL. And it actually says the founding fathers were bad. America's bad. Well, there's a video on there. I was sent by a firefighter in 2000. 18 hours of it I was sent, two days of FEMA teaching the firefighters, sheriff's deputies, police in Kansas City that the founding fathers were bad people and terrorists and that they're going to have to be wiped out. People like them. I said 2000. It was actually before 9-11. It was 7 19 2001 I'm going from memory here. You can go watch the video right now if you'd like. We're, we're a guy, military bearing. You know, a sheep dip military spec ops guy is sitting there bad mouthing George Washington. I mean, boy, I wonder who the traitors are in this country. Boy, let me, one plus one equals, what's it equal? Actually, now they're saying three times four in the new federal stuff out this week. They teach the kids that equals 11. Yeah, I mean, I mean when your government teaches these kids under federal guidelines that Three times four equals 11. I'm not kidding. That's a mainline headline. Sh show folks that article if you're, if you're watching us on TV at prisonplanet.tv or just search engine that. Federal curriculum teaches uh, students that three times four equals 11. No, it equals tyranny. It equals mind control. And bad-mouthing the Bill of Rights, the Constitution, equals those people need to leave this country. They're involved in sedition because you got free speech all day, folks. But when you try to take over the government, yes, the Daily Caller, Obama math under new common core, three times four equals 11. And then they've got the training video. <laughs> I, just, I just can't handle it anymore. I mean, it's like Obama last Thursday was on CNN. And, and we're going to play this clip coming up. That, go ahead and cue it up. I'll get to that now and then share in the next segment. And he says... You know, the CNN uh, uh, reporter's like, so, should we have concerns? I mean, is, are they spying on us? And he goes, no, there are not even allegations that we're spying on your email. That's like saying, there are not even allegations that Hitler had a mustache under his nose. There are not even allegations that the symbol of the Washington Redskins is a chief. There are not even allegations that SEALs have flippers. There are not even allegations Ladies and gentlemen, that uh, pit bulls sometimes eat children. There are not even allegations that police wear blue uniforms. There are not even allegations that Niagara Falls is a waterfall. There are not even allegations that the most famous building in New York City is the Empire State Building. There are not even allegations that Barack Obama uh, is the President of the United States. There are not even allegations that Austin, Texas is the capital of Texas. There are not even allegations that George Washington was the first president of the Republic. There are not even allegations that the Pentagon is shaped like a Pentagon. There are not even allegations that federal street signs are green and yellow. There are not even allegations that Washington is on the Potomac. There are not even allegations that the Queen of England wears a crown on top of her head. There are not even, I mean, ladies and gentlemen, the level of, of lying and talking down to you. Do we have that clip? Uh, here is our leader. Do some of these systems end up being like a loaded gun out there that somebody at some future point could abuse? Oh, because could there abuse. Are no allegations. Oh, Oh, I'm and sorry. I am very confident knowing the NSA and how they operate that purposely somebody's out there trying to abuse this program or listen in on people's email. Uh, or, uh, You're confident calls. in that? I am confident in that. By the way, folks, but, it is in Reuters, AP, you name it, today, what already came out a year ago, 10 years ago. Hey, will you guys print me the article from Friday that we had on InfoWars? The headline was... Uh, NSA exposed in 1986, I think it was, and it showed the Washington Post article under it where they exposed how everything was being recorded and how it had been set up and everything. I, I mean, this is literally when we have debates about this, like saying there's not even an allegation that the sky's blue. 
uh, you know, or that clouds have rain in them. I mean, it, it's just, I mean, at a certain point, it, it is a conspiracy theory if you know how to tie your shoelaces. I've realized that that's all demonizing us is, is a cop out on thinking people. Shallow, lazy, dumb people that want to shuffle around uh, in, their, in their evening slippers at the mall, uh, you know, weighing 700 pounds, living on welfare, they want to point their finger at those of us that produce and built this country and who know what we're talking about and just say, oh, you're using big words and things about history. I feel inadequate. I'm going to laugh at you and call you a conspiracy theorist. Okay, you're right. I'm a conspiracy theorist. Obama is not lying to us, ladies and gentlemen. There's not even allegations. No, you're right. There aren't allegations, which is which implies that no, no one's even saying we're spying on you. It came out that the NSA is spying on their boyfriends and girlfriends and harassing people. That's mainstream news today. The NSA admits it's been illegal and is asking Congress to come in and take them over because they don't want to do illegal things. <laughs> but 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 it doesn't exist. The NSA doesn't even exist. I remember hearing that back in the mid-90s. We'll be back. I'm going to get into the huge news on Syria. Stay with us. We're live, folks. We had open phones for the entire two hours last Sunday. I'll probably give the number out uh, later in the next hour. I've just got so much news I've absolutely got to get to, it, but I do want to go to your calls. We take a lot of calls also, of course, on the weekday broadcast, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central, 12 noon to 3 p.m. Eastern. Find all the Showtime's listing info and more, and find out about the InfoWars Nightly News at PrisonPlanet.tv, PrisonPlanet.com, and InfoWars.com. Follow us on Twitter at RealAlexJones, and you can also find our Facebook and things uh, there on the site as well. Well, where to start here? Because I've already gone off into the NSA. So I think I should just go over some of the headlines on that since I mentioned it. Uh, the NSA bugged the UN headquarters. That's out today. Uh, the NSA has been caught under orders of the White House uh, three months ago. Members of Congress went public. It was picked up by almost no news. InfoWars covered it. Drudge covered it. Uh, almost no one else covered it. Members of Congress said they confirmed the cloakroom was bugged. Well, I mean, of course, who do you think's bugged? The Senate, the House, CEOs of major companies. Uh, that's, that's what the NSA's for, is to capture trends as they develop, to look over the horizon politically, to be given uh, that, that economic corporate data to select interest, all paid for by taxpayers at tens of billions a year. Well over tens of billions a year. Just to pay for that selective data so that they can... Find the trends or the phenomenon as they first develop and then capitalize on it. That's, that's its big secret. Next, watching political enemies, making sure whistleblowers don't go public. And, and by the way, they've got all these former NSA employees. I've got several articles today in the stack that we'll try to get to who are going public with what they can say legally. Really legally, if something's illegal, you can say whatever you want about it. But they're persecuting members of the press and whistleblowers now that, that you know that even follow the law clearly. I mean, if you catch your supervisor in the federal government, you say murdering children, and they say that well, we'll arrest you if you whistleblow. Well, I mean, it's covered to release classified info if crimes are being committed within it. This idea that they're above the law is the essence of the T word tyranny. And so now the NSA has come out the last week and said, yeah, we're doing stuff that's illegal. We're, we're, we're dragnetting it. This is what we were told to do by Congress and the executive. And then Congress goes, gee, we didn't know about it. And then it turns out they've been part of it for 20 plus years putting this in place. And then the executive has been in even more out of control because it's more centralized. And then you've got the uh, federal judiciary knee deep in it. Uh, you've got the DEA up to their eyeballs. That's all mainstream news now. And you've got the Justice Department wallowing in it. And don't forget ABC News. Let's put that on screen. From 2009 reporting on Israel having, and all, uh, as well as other companies, a communist Chinese company came out last month, overrunning the databases and the private computer systems listening to everyone's phone calls. There it is. Israel wiretaps the NSA. James Bamford, a former producer of Nightline, exposes that on Democracy Now. So, so that's what I'm talking about, folks, is that this is globalism. 
There's over 800,000 top security clearances in the U.S. for private contractors just for what they call you know, security uh, surveillance, but really it's spying illegally. And, 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 and that's what's come out in the news. More than 2,000 companies have access to highly classified stuff and are swapping it all around. And hundreds of companies have access to everything. They can dial into your phone call live anytime they want. They can turn your phone on when it's off and listen to you. This is all admitted. They can track everything you're doing. They can plant stuff on your account. Why do you think Google didn't get prosecuted worldwide for driving around with their Google cars, grabbing all the passwords and codes with government backdoors to break into everything? I told you all that five years ago. It's now mainstream news. And the entire hacker community, by the way, the White Hat folks have known this forever. That's why they killed Aaron Schwartz, who was really one of the head, uh, heads of Anonymous. Murdered him. Hung him. That's why uh, they've got people like Barrett Brown in jail up in Dallas with over a dozen federal charges for nothing. Because he might have known the person that hacked into Stratford, one of the little sub-propaganda arms of the CIA that's based here in Austin, Texas. And you've got all of this stuff going on. And they raid this guy. And clearly, even mainstream media, even the Dallas Morning News admits, have shut him up. They're going after anybody who might be able to expose the criminal stuff that's going on inside the federal government. And all these select uh, you know, groups that are given access to all this private data and that just swap it and trade it and sell it 24-7. And then here's Obama, can we cue it back up, saying there's not even an allegation that we're doing anything wrong with your information. Here it is, Senator, you know, comes out and admits that Congress doesn't know the extent of the NSA surveillance. That's Corker. Uh, it comes out that employees eavesdropped on love interest, significant, significant others. I mean, these are the headlines. That's in the Telegraph. And it goes on and on and on and on and on and on. And then now we've got all these different former NSA employees coming out saying, hey, we don't want to be part of this. We want to speak out. We want to say no. We want to do the right thing. Congress, of course, knows what's going on. But Dick Cheney says we need to protect America. That's the quote, we need to protect this nation. You mean the special interests that have taken it over and are looting it, Cheney? So that's just some of what we're dealing with. There's a Zero Hedge article that has the headline, Internet Architects Plan Counterattack on NSA Snooping. And that's why the Pentagon is announcing they're going to be going after even domestic bloggers that expose what's happening as if bloggers and alternative media are the enemy. Because if you are a criminal foreign globalist combine that's gotten control of the federal government, it's also being reported by the Financial Times of London, if all of that's going on, a real Americans or liberty lovers period worldwide that, that instinctively stand against what you're doing, you're going to have to go after them. You're going to have to shut them down. You're going to have to silence them or you're not going to be able to fully take over and do all the tyrannical things you have planned, which the sky's the limit. The level of tyranny you'll live under is the exact amount you'll put up with. Because there are no allegations, and I am very confident knowing the NSA and how they operate, that purposely somebody's out there trying to abuse this program or listen in That's on enough. people's emails. Yeah, there's no allegations. It's on record that they targeted hundreds of major churches that they targeted the Associated Press, that they targeted small blogs, that they targeted federal employees to find out if they were criticizing their boss in their private email, that they've used it to intimidate and harass and sexually harass men and women alike, that it's been used uh, to absolutely find financial data out against groups that aren't part of the inside track. All of this is public. So you're right, Obama, there aren't allegations. It's absolute fact that on your corrupt watch, this stuff has ballooned, has exploded. And I mean, I thought Bush was bad. This is, this is, this is warp speed garbage that is going on right now. 
and it's despicable. And then I see all these left shows and MSNBC and others. I've seen them. In fact, remind me to find that clip because I want to put a clip of that in the Obama deception too. A few months ago, they're like, of course we're spying on the Tea Party. They're dangerous. Of course we're telling these pro-life groups what they can do. These are bad people. Good job. We need to be, you know, going after these people for their speech. I mean, they're proud of it. They're authoritarians. They're not liberals. And if you had Republicans doing stuff like this, you know I'd be against them. I was. I was against Clinton because he was a horrible globalist. I was against Bush because he was a horrible globalist. But I'm telling you, with Obama, because they can politically go, oh, he's black, so everything's okay. You're racist if you criticize him. This stuff is doubled and then tripled what it was previously. Now, the big news, the many analysts say it could lead to a wider regional war and even World War III. The situation in Syria, straight ahead. Then we'll talk to a gun confiscation victim. They won't even tell him why they took his gun. Stay with us. All right, ladies and gentlemen, final segment of this hour. In the next hour, I'm going to get into the actual document and the quotes from the Department of Defense training manual that spends about a third of its time bad-mouthing uh, everything, from, everything from the Founding Fathers to Tea Party to uh, land rights groups to people that, quote, want to make the world a better place. They say that's code as the new enemy uh, the extremist, and that's their that's their main enemy. Of course, if they read the other FBI training manuals, they would find out that the number one enemy the state police are taught is returning veterans, <laughs> and then gun owners, and then libertarians, and then conservatives. Like a few months ago, it, as we've talked a lot about and did an article on, it was in the uh, Denver Post. They were defending it, though, like it was a good idea. But there was a big furor with the state police when uh, it was over 100 senior ones were in a federal training uh, auditorium, and we're taught to uh, be, be prepared to confiscate Christians' guns because they are an end times cult. They believe in the second coming of Christ. Same thing Janet Reno famously said on 60 Minutes back in like 1994, I think it was, uh, right after Waco. And uh, a bunch of them walked out and freaked out. See, see, that's normal. You're supposed to freak out, folks, when somebody badmouths the founding fathers and says, we may have to arrest uh, Christians and take their guns in mass. I mean, that's when you, like, freak out. Like, you know, this is a takeover. I mean, in the old days, if you heard somebody, like, in their office, uh, or let's say you were in an apple barrel, uh, like in Treasure Island, uh, the, uh, the uh, fiction, and then he hears who he thought was the cook, who's really the captain of the pirates, going, I, once we get to shore, we'll kill him as sure as you know and get the gold, Billy Bones as treasure. I, you know, and then they go, he goes to the captain, they get their guns, they stop him. And then there's a big counter mutiny or whatever, and then some of them escape or whatever. You know the story. But, I mean, it's like they're not, we're not in an apple barrel hearing them talking about their takeover. We are right out in the open seeing just open pirates saying we're the enemy. <laughs> it's, it's, it's unbelievable. I can't even believe it when Judicial Watch gets these documents and the Justice Department responds and defends them. Because the Justice Department runs the Pentagon now, basically. It is unbelievable. So we're going to get into that uh, and a lot of other really important news. But, I mean, this serious situation, I've been talking about it for two and a half years. Our listeners pretty much already know all the details. I am shocked by the fact that the, it looks like they're going to get away with it again. And then they're going to do it again and again and again. They got us into the Spanish-American War by blowing up our own ship, the USS Maine in 1898. Um, Hitler got Germany into war by staging attacks on his own military bases in Operation Himmler at places like Gleiwitz. That's, that's declassified in public. I'm giving you historical accounts here. If you want to go look them up, it's all on record. Gulf of Tonkin, 64, to fully get us into the Vietnam War. Fake attack on our ship or ships. Uh, I mean, there's so many examples of this. The 53 coup was based on a staged uh, provocateur false flag. That was declassified last week. Confirming everything I put in my Terror Storm film, 2006. Um, it wasn't hard to know that. I mean, the guy that led the operation, the CIA commander, Kermit Roosevelt, wrote a best-selling book bragging about it all. Wasn't like I, <laughs> wasn't like I was imagining this or anything. Uh, but that's just some of the basic facts there. Uh, Assad, Assad. Um, He's not an angel, but he's not attacking anybody, and he was democratizing the country. 
and the globalists use that democratization to be able to get their Al Qaeda forces pre-deployed. And now for two and a half years, they've attacked out of Jordan and out of Turkey with mainly Saudi Arabian uh, sheep dipped uh, jihadi. Sheep dipped is where you take a military person and then put them in civilian clothes. Uh, and they've dumped over 100,000 in the last two and a half years. They have been caught three times. In fact, did you guys give me the Yahoo article? I know you showed it on screen, but I want to read it for people. Remember in January, Yahoo had to admit, oh, it's confirmed. The rebels launched this chemical attack to blame it on Syria. Now there it is, flashback. Yahoo uncovered Syrian chemical weapons false flag in January. BBC Today said it was an accident. Uh, yeah, sure. Jeffrey Dahmer, it was an accident too. Put up fake photos of masses of dead people. Now, now I want to be clear. In fact, there it is, flashback. BBC News uses Iraq photos to illustrate Syrian massacre. And, and, and we, we actually go to our story on that and show people that. Uh, you know, they showed a lot more people dead in Iraq and have actually been killed in Syria. I don't know if Assad did this. There is a chance that there are really leprechauns at the end of rainbows that maybe there are unicorns. I mean, I mean maybe there are WMDs in Iraq, folks. Um, the, the, this very rebel group and the Saudi Arabian TV network that put this out, it turns out they'd uploaded the massacre videos a day before. You can look that up on Infowars.com. We have an article about it. So, so the massacre happened, but they, they, sta they staged it, killed some people, shot video of it, then put it out the next day with it all scripted. And that way they could control the story and make sure they weren't going to get caught. And, and that's as best we can tell from the information. It's about a 99% in my brain guesstimation that this was completely staged by the Al-Qaeda rebels to, I mean, Obama said a year ago to the day, a year ago to the day of last week, what was it Wednesday the, the nerve gas attack happened? He said a year ago to the day, and that's an open message to everybody who did it in the world, who's informed in governments, because the globalists want other governments knowing, look how ruthless we are. We gave nerve gas to Al-Qaeda. <laughs> you better, better do what we say. And so it is just absolutely ridiculous that this is going on. I mean, when you've got a rebel group three times caught staging small chemical attacks to blame it on Assad, two before Obama's red line speech, one after, so that Obama could say, if there's a chemical attack, we're going to start a no-fly zone and start bombing you with the peace bombs, just like Libya. And we're going to put Al-Qaeda in charge, just like we tried to do in Egypt. And then right on time, see, this is all targeting unconscious people that barely pay attention to the news and just go, hey, there's some foreigner. Did you hear that guy in Syria nerve gassed his people? When the average person doesn't even know what nerve gas is. I mean, I'm sad to say this, but the general public's not studied military affairs. They, they don't study Jane's Weapons Quarterly. They don't know what the Ba'athist Party is. They don't know what jihadis are. They don't know what the... Uh, Wahhabi a star. They don't know who the Qatari special forces are. They don't know that Turkey has been off and on bombarding major parts of Syria with heavy artillery for no reason. It, so they can inject troops in and give them beachheads. I mean, this is the West carving up Syria to break it in three pieces. They've said that publicly. That's the plan. A month ago, Henry Kissinger was back on the news saying that's the plan. We're actually winning. This is our plan. Destabilize, break in at least two to three pieces. I, I mean, that's the, the program. Wesley Clark, the, the general, former head NATO general, has gone public in briefings where they planned this back under Clinton. I mean, this is all a long-term plan, and they're using al-Qaeda to enter a country, blow up all the churches, engage in every massacre you, you can imagine, and the neocon talk show host on Friday, I confirmed and went and heard the clips. All the big names, you know who they are. They said, well, I don't like Obama and his wars, but we've got to get behind this because you know, we've got to have NATO. And Obama's not tough enough. You know, so see, Obama can play the part of a peace nick. Oh, everyone's begging me to launch another peace prize action. Maybe I'll get another peace prize, like turning Libya over to Al-Qaeda and all the mass murder there. It is amazing. It is amazing to see a total replay 
of all of this. So senior administration official, very little doubt Assad regime behind alleged chemical attack. The, the, the Hagel, the head of the Defense Department, says they're getting ready to do something. Why, uh, Hagel, U.S. prepared for all contingencies. Syrian massacre, uh, BBC News, Iraq photos to uh, illustrate Syrian massacre. Uses, uses five-year-old photos. No, no, 2003 photos. My goodness, that's 10 years ago. Time flies. U.S. set stage for bigger role in Syria. Wall Street Journal, they've already launched the invasion with CIA special ops months ago. They're already on the ground out of Jordan on record. Russia warns U.S. not to repeat Syria past mistakes in region. It's not mistakes. So they lie about WMDs. They lie about everything else. Syria's been telling the U.N. they can inspect. The media spins it like, too late. You didn't let us inspect immediately, which isn't even true. They want to go in there. And then they think you're so dumb. A year after they break up Syria, our government will be bombing the Al-Qaeda people they put in charge and taking our rights here in America because Al-Qaeda has been given heat-seeking missiles by the criminal globalists that run our government. Second hour coming up. Tell your friends and family to tune in. Infowars.com. All right, coming up in the next segment, Joe Mendez, one of thousands to have his guns taken in California, and they won't tell him why they took them. We'll see if he's found anything out since we talked to him a few days ago. He'll join us on the show coming up. Here is our own David Knight's report to give you the intel on it before we go to him after the break. This morning, NPR carried a gung-ho report on gun confiscation in California. They accompanied a gang of government employees as they went about confiscating guns, as they put it, one by one. We're riding in a caravan of four unmarked trucks through the bedroom communities of the San Francisco East Bay. The trucks carry nine state agents wearing bulletproof vests and armed with 40 caliber Glock pistols and tasers. They'll spend the next six hours looking for illegal guns. Well, isn't that exciting and fun? But one thing that was missing from the NPR report was the constitutional perspective. Also missing was what it feels like to be on the receiving end of that. We have someone, Joe Mendez, who had this happen to him in California, and he gives a perspective of what it feels like to have your constitutional rights violated. Immediately, I got two M16 machine gun rifles within five inches from my face on both sides. One cop came up with his gun in my face, and the other one proceeded to put my hands behind my back, conducted a raid on my house, and placed me under arrest for the sole purpose of owning and possessing assault rifles, which were legal to own. They illegally came about 14 agents deep, and they lured me out of my house. They concocted a story, and they told my wife in the morning when she woke up, a phony CHP car shows up and tells my wife, hey, your car was involved in a hit and run last night. We're taking a report. And who are these people that NPR is so excited about having their guns confiscated? His team will visit the homes of 11 people who are considered armed and prohibited persons, people on the so-called apps list. They are all people who at one time purchased firearms legally. Armed and prohibited persons. Armed and prohibited persons. APPs. They've even got an acronym for it. These assault rifles were purchased in the 1980s and they are fabricated from 1984 and 19, late 1960s to 70s. These are people who have purchased firearms legally, but now California has decided that they've lost a right to own a gun. Well, what does it take to lose your right in California? A felony conviction. Well, there's a lot of felonies on the books. Even things like releasing balloons on a beach can be a felony. You could have a complaint in a domestic dispute or even a minor misdemeanor conviction. Well, to paraphrase Pastor Martin Niemuller, First they came for the people with nonviolent felony convictions, then they came for the people with misdemeanor convictions. NPR is proud of the fact that California is cross-checking what they call, quote, an extensive, constantly updated database. The NRA initially supported this law, but now even they are opposing it. For instance, if you are in a fight and you admit to being in the fight, you can lose your right to own guns and find yourself being SWAT teamed to confiscate your guns. And what does this tell us about the government's priorities? A couple of months before, there was a guy who was renting here who we couldn't get rid of. He was cooking meth, actually cooking drugs, illegal drugs, in his apartment here. We called the Citrus Heights Police Department and the police said, even if he had all of the drugs laid out on the table, 
and we caught him doing it. There, we couldn't do anything about it because there's no budget to press arrests on drugs. Governor Jerry Brown is expanding this program, hiring 36 agents at a cost of $24 million. That's about $670,000 per agent. Why does the government ignore crime and attack peaceful gun owners? Could that money be better spent on stopping violent crime? But NPR tells us it's tedious, expensive, and time-consuming work for dozens of armed agents to ambush gun owners one by one. This is where gun registration leads, to gun confiscation. The point of gun registration is gun confiscation. They believe that they are the only ones that should possess firearms. Owning a gun is not a crime. The criminals are those who violate the Constitution and their oath of office to confiscate the guns of peaceful gun owners. You too must abide by the law, and you haven't been abiding by the law in a long time. For InfoWars Nightly News, I'm David Knight. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back with Joe Mendez on the other side live. Dozens of diseases ranging from the common cold and flu to... All right, here in the second hour tonight, thank you so much for joining us. I'm going to shift gears into the attack on our basic liberties here in the Republic and how Homeland Security has been set up as a fifth branch of the military to get around the Constitution and Posse Comitatus to basically absorb the old Republic. And DrudgeReport.com uh, has a uh, link to a story uh, in the documents with Judicial Watch this is public documents now. They sued to get them. Uh, Department of Defense teaches that anyone promoting states' rights or liberty uh, is the enemy. And the troops are taught that they are the enemy. So we're going to be uh, going over that report uh, and reading some of those quotes uh, coming up. Uh, I'm also going to get more into what a Syria open war could turn into with uh, NATO and U.S. assets bombing uh, the military facilities and, and, and front lines to allow al-Qaeda to fully take over the country when they're committing such massive atrocities that our media won't even cover and, and, and that they call protest or activism when they blow up a church or whatever. And the fact that our government and other governments have been caught staging stuff like this before. I mean, it's real death from nerve gas, but the very rebels have been caught staging it before. And that's not just me saying that. That's the UN. That's NATO has been forced to admit it. But it's like, that's okay, rebels. You, you know, you tried. Uh, Yahoo had to admit it back in January. They got caught staging an event. BBC's been caught showing fake photos of dead people. I believe they really killed people, but BBC's been caught showing, showing fake photos from a different war. And that's in the one in Telegraph today. So we know there's a bunch of war propaganda going on here. We'd be insane not to ask questions. And I see a lot of sock puppet disinfo on Infowars.com in the comments going, you traitor, how dare you say no one died? I never said that. You traitor, how dare you be for nerve gassing children? Oh, like the babies thrown out of the incubators by Saddam, that wasn't true? That's now admitted to have been fake? To launch that whole war and all the horrible things that have happened out of it? I mean, this is getting ridiculous, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm going to talk more about that. And I've got some economic news and political news I want to get to uh, as well. And at the bottom of the hour, we're going to premiere a report uh, that John Bowne did uh, Friday that, is, that didn't air on the nightly news yet because he got back right before it went on the news. We're going to premiere uh, a disgusting research piece we did. You know, Mark Dice, who contributes to Infowars.com, media commentator, he lives in L.A., so he goes out to the beach and we've been sent the unedited videos. I'm going to use clips of it in Obama Deception too. What you see is the people he talks to. He just edits out, you know, in between interviews. So if nine people say, yes, we should kill all old people for Obamacare, that's really the people that said that. Or if nine out of ten people say we should arrest all gun owners and all Republicans and all veterans, that's actually what was. It's not like we're going out and trying to find idiots. We sent Leanne McAdoo out a few months ago, and she went downtown to the pedestrian bridge over the Colorado River, Lady Bird Lake or whatever it's named today. It's really the Colorado River. It's all the lies in the society. I mean, they might as well just call it the Candy Lake River or something. I mean, whatever. Whatever they name it this month. And it was like 12 out of 13 people, when we counted it up, said... 
yes, ban water for Obama. If we said we want to ban hydrogen monoxide for the earth, 12 people signed it, including guys bragging, yeah, I'm a, I got a you know, chemistry degree from Cornell. I'm real smart. How you doing there, honey? You know? I mean, it is amazing how dumb and unconscious the public is. We went out and almost everyone in Austin signed a petition to have all the guns taken. <laughs> I mean, and, and folks, if you go to a Democratic trendy area, if we go to a conservative area like Dripping Springs, in fact, I want you to go do that and compare it because I know I live out there. Everyone, everyone will say never arrest whoever says that. You go to UT, you go to downtown Austin, you go to a trendy area, SoCo, with the Californians, Ladies and gentlemen, these are authoritarian, like Stepford wife pod people or something. I mean, if you say it's for Obama, they will they will sign anything. Mark Dice has said, you know, we're going to kill babies uh, after they're born for Obama. Boom. Yes, sir. Let me sign that. We're going to arrest Tea Partiers and put them in forced labor camps. Absolutely. They're bad. Let me sign that. I mean, these are a cult of sicko freaks. I mean, they are dangerous, folks. They are not liberals. Now, we're going to go to him here for a moment, come back to him in the next segment. I just want to tell you what's coming up. I always say what's coming up and just start reporting it all right there. That's my problem. Uh, Joe Mendez, we'll put the Bloomberg headline up from a few months ago. Gun confiscation begins in California. California seizes guns as owners lose right to keep their arms. And, and in the article, it admits that they don't tell you why they're there. They can just claim that when you were in the army, you collapsed once and they said it was PTSD. Or, or they can just say, oh, you had a misdemeanor now, even though that's not law and they take them. But they won't tell you. And this is all over the country this is happening. But it's really bad in California with these federal grants. And so I want gun owners to know what you're facing now. Courts are now saying that when a divorce proceeding starts, they may make you turn your guns in just in case you might do something bad. It's kind of like one rodeo clown wears an Obama mask and runs from the bull. They say that's a threat on Obama. No, that's what rodeo clowns do. That's part of the act. And all of them in the state of Missouri have to take $300 to $1,000. It depends. Sensitivity training, federally fun. So, so they're all guilty for something that isn't even illegal the guy did. Same thing. Just, oh, we're just here. We're just a SWAT team. We're going to take your gun. And as of our video report we did last Thursday on this, he had not still found out about the August 7th raid more than a week before why they raided him. The court won't tell him why they've got his guns, what he's charged with. Uh, this, and folks, this is, this is the new 1984. So, so in a nutshell, Joe... Tell folks what happened to you. We're going to come back and break down the whole story because you also say in the jail, it was mainly other people like you. So this is a this is a persecution like in Nazi Germany. It was the Jews and the gypsies and the Christians. Now it's gun owners. So, uh, you know, it's, it's Joe Mendez today. It's Alex Jones tomorrow. Joe, thanks for joining us. You're welcome, Alex. Uh, happy to be here. Yeah. Um, on August 7th, uh, between 1030 and 11, uh, agents of the ATF. California Highway Patrol and members of the Sacramento Sheriff's uh, Police Department conducted a raid on our house. I'm sure you guys saw the video. Um, they told my wife that morning that our car had been involved in a hit and run crime the night before, which was very much a lie because I never go to sleep before four. I do a lot of uh, training and research and uh, I also have a hobby that I do. I build World War II historical models and I train my body never to go to sleep before uh, four or five in the morning. Um, I can sleep for a couple of hours, five, five hours, and then I get up and, and begin my day. Um, she called me that morning and told me there is a police officer here who needs to take a statement from you because our car was involved in a hit and run last night. And I said, how can that be when the car never moved? That's very strange. So they gave you a false report, which if a citizen did that, it's a felony. Yes, it was a false report. This whole thing started on a lie. Um, I proceeded to come down from our condominium into the office where there was one what I could notice was a CHP officer there on the radio, and he told me, hi, how are you? And, and he was all really nice and everything. And um, I said, so what's this all about? And he's like, uh, yeah, last night your car was involved in a hit and run, but you have nothing to worry about because it was a black man, he said, and you're not black. All right, right? stay there. This gets only more bizarre.
And we're going to come back. You've got video of it all. This is on record. Done nothing wrong. This happens to you. They took your gun. Stay with us. Oats by George Washington. That's the drug for me. My heart. My heart. Kickstart a patriot's heart. You need to kickstart America's heart. All right. Now, Joe Mendez, just to recap, this has been in the news now. They're like, well, of course. No criminal record. No felonies. Family guy. Uh... They come arrest him, tell him it's because a black man used his car to run over somebody. He's going to finish the story here, but I'm just recapping it so you get the whole story. Disappear him. Now he's learned they're saying his guns are illegal. And I know California law, I know the federal law, folks. These are legally semi-auto guns bought in the 80s. And they don't care. They're, they are making the determination, as the ATF's done before outside of law until Congress stops them, to take them. And now the ATF, to warn everyone, is saying you're... AR-15, uh, if it's an older cult type, uh, M-16 that's semi-auto, they might take those. Uh, I mean, or, or, or if, oh, it's got a bayonet lug. This is how scary it is when these folks are outside the law. So, so Joe Mendez, uh, you've also got your great YouTube channel, which is why I think they went after you. They've been really persecuting veterans and conservatives, and libertarians as well. Uh, but it's Warrior for God 13. It's a great YouTube site. Show, uh, go back to the, 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 the state police guys out there. He's on his radio, goes, you have nothing to worry about. We had a report of a hit and run in your car with a black guy. And then uh, continue with what happened to you, sir. He's like, you're not a black guy, right? I said, no. He goes, then don't you got nothing to worry about? And he calls into his radio and he says, I have a Joe Mendez here. And as soon as he said that, all hell broke loose. About three agents rushed into the door of the office. And two of them proceeded to put their M16 machine guns five inches away from my head on each side. The other guy grabbed my arms and put them to the back and said, don't you move. And then the guys with the machine guns yelled at me, don't move. And I looked at them and they were more nervous than I was. I it wasn't even, didn't even have an idea of what was going on, why this was happening to me. And I said, what is going on? And they said, shut up. And I said, I have a right to know why I'm being arrested. And they said, be quiet. Is there anybody else in the house? And I said, no, just our dogs or whatever. So they took me outside and then they proceeded to interrogate. Two of them stayed inside and were interrogating my wife, trying to turn her against me now that I later on I found out. Um, and outside, they sat me down. I didn't want to sit down. And, and I said, I demand to know what's going on. It's my legal right to know if I'm being arrested. And one guy said, there's a warrant for your for the search of your condo and an arrest. And I said, why? Why is there a warrant? And he said, we'll tell you later. And to this day, they won't give me the probable cause that led to the judge to sign the warrant to search my house, to arrest me and confiscate my firearms. They, I believe they're trying to railroad me. Uh, the public defender, the first one I got, the first thing he said is, we go in with the mentality of let's make a deal. And I said, I'm not making any deal. I have nothing. Oh, I yeah, he works it. with them just like the judge. And, and and I was reading your case. They admit California got, a, got the lion's share uh, per capita of the federal raid money to have the local police go into the feds with the ATF. So, so basically the story here is the ATF is deputizing and giving uh, hazard pay. So these cops can make an extra 60, 70,000 a year on top of their 70,000 a year uh, on average out in California. They can make more than a doctor doing this evil work if people ask why they're doing it. And we're seeing cases confirmed where you've got the Rutherford Institute suing and others over it, where veterans with no criminal record who were talk show hosts say, I, I think Obama's a traitor. And the police show up and they say, we're doing a commitment outside of law and then they go, we're never letting you go until you admit you're, you're, you're mentally ill and sign an agreement to turn your guns in. So the persecution, the purge has already begun. But, but the corporate press is not going to tell people. And mainline conservative talk show hosts won't talk about this. I know they copy everything I do, so maybe they'll pick up on it and do it now. But we need to do a nightly news report this week showing the dozens of prominent cases in the last month of this. And uh, this is just outrageous, sir. Because I've looked at the documents, I've seen them on your site, uh, the guns you had, I went and looked at the federal law and California law, they're legal. You just can't sell these anymore. Nope. And, 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 and so you can't sell them in California anymore, but your guns, this is amazing. I mean, none of us are safe. This is incredible. It has started. Everything 
I, I've been talking about this stuff for years, and people would say that I was nuts and, and this and that. Well, well, that's why they targeted you. You're well-spoken. You're reaching out to people in California. Uh, hundreds of thousands of people are coming to your channel. They're watching what you say. You're a patriot. That's why they did this to you. Yes, yes. They're targeting us. When I got to jail, Alex, I, 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 don't, I didn't talk much because I don't want to say anything, but I was listening to the conversations in there, and I figured about 70 to 75% of us that were in there that day were for one violation or the other, and I found out that they came to everybody's house to apprehend them that day. Now, I went on calguns.net because I'm looking for a lawyer to help me that's affordable. I have no money. I lost my job over this, and... And me and my wife, it took all the resources. Why to don't you contact, the, I'll get you in contact with the Rutherford Institute. People should support you. But, but here's what you need to know, sir. There's your damages right there. Because these scum employment places and bosses, I mean, I've seen it where the, the guy that you know, was pulling the rabbit out of the hat in Missouri, 20-year famous magician, he went to a library, they were paying him to be there. They sent the feds in with badges that like he was wrong for not having the proper forms, and he lost that business. This is what they do, and now you've lost your job because, oh, my gosh, this guy's got guns. We, uh, that's how Nazi Germany started. We've got to stand with you or they're going to come after all of us. But absolutely, sir, you've already got damages, the fact that you lost your job over this. What does your boss say to you? You're just, you're just too evil now. Pretty much, to be honest with you, they, that's another thing. They, I, I, we contacted them, my wife did, so that she could pick up my last check. They wouldn't return our call. They, it took like two weeks for them to even acknowledge me and finally send my last paycheck and stuff like that. Yeah, everybody's turning their back, and this is going to happen to everybody. This is what we've been talking about. This is here now. This that's right. That's right. And, and a lot of people are going to hear this, and they're going to buckle under, and then they're going to lose everything. You got to stand against tyranny now. It's happening everywhere. And so many veterans I know, when they come and throw them in the loony bin for no reason because they've been criticizing the government, their friends and family say, come on, go along with it. And then they, the feds call their job and get them fired so that they're destitute. I mean, this is how Hitler did this the first five years before he started really rounding people up is he, he cut everybody off financially. He took their guns and then he did this. Yes. Well, it's like I was telling my, my friend, I feel like they're starting to do gun sweeps and, and try to move the legal abiding citizens that are armed out of the way so that when the hammer drops, there's not going to be any opposition. Everybody's just going to file in and do exactly as. Well, sir, you saw, you saw Katrina, tens of thousands, high and dry areas, not just uh, New Orleans. The feds went to the richest houses, blew up the safes, took the guns and arrested the people that were there legally and lawfully. This is about a monopoly of force. I want to come back and get your take on where this goes from here. But folks, this is happening everywhere. And they are coming after gun owners. They are they're coming into gun shops here in Austin that are scared to come on air and saying, you're going to report on people buying guns, even though it's already on record what they bought. And you're going to file reports they're suspicious so we can SWAT team them. And they're like, I'm not going to do that. Well, then we're going to raid you. I mean, this is secret police stuff, folks. They want them to bear false witness. I'll say this for all you people that love big government and get reflected glory out of it and are marveling at the rise of worldwide tyranny. If you want big government, if you want tyranny, you're going to get front row seats to it. I really feel sorry for all the useful idiots out there. Uh, Homeland Security, I, I, I've now learned from multiple sources uh, what Michael Hastings was looking into. He was looking into a bunch of stuff, but it was Operation Endgame. Working with, uh, well, I'm going to get more into it tomorrow. But the point is, is it was Operation Endgame, a DHS program. Uh, he was working with Barrett Brown and others looking into how they were planning to use Rex 84 program under the auspices of the new Endgame operation. By the way, there'll be feds having to go into work tonight over what I'm saying on air. There's alarms going off right now that I'm even saying this. But I'll just go ahead and throw this out at you right now. Uh, Operation uh, Endgame, tied into Rex 84, special ops will know what I'm talking about right now. I'll get more into this tomorrow in details exactly what it all means. Uh, that's one of the things that uh, really made the feds go completely ape with the Rolling Stone Associated Editor. And basically, it's using the federal task forces 
that they've set up working with local police. They used rounding up illegals as the cover, just like Rex 84 called for in 1986. That came out in congressional testimony. They've actually set that up as the cover grid for the training to round up gun owners, conservatives, libertarians, uh, and people that are seen as political dissidents. And what's amazing about this is this is now actually in the public army manuals. Just type in re-education camp army manual. You'll be on army.mil. It's all actually in plain view. It's so hard for me to even believe it, though. Now, I don't know if they're going to pull the trigger on this. I don't think they can get away with it, even with a false flag. So they probably won't. But they are all over New York State, California, Michigan, and other areas the feds control, taking people's guns by the hundreds every day that are totally legal. They'll take veterans that you know are business people with no criminal record and throw them in a mental institution for six months and force drug them till they sign papers agreeing to have their guns taken. We've had the people on the show. There's civil rights groups suing over this. I mean, they are persecuting us bad. And, you know, we talk to somebody like Joe Mendez. It just freaks me out to realize how deep we are into this. And I'm even gotten kind of acclimated that it's okay. Just by increment, you wake up and you're in Nazi Germany. You're in Soviet Russia. Mr. Mendez, we're almost out of time. I want to get you back up for 30, 40 minutes or a full hour later in the week. Your story is just incredible. I'm going to play a piece here in a minute in Austin uh, where everyone we talked to, I think except for one person, said, yes, take everyone's guns. Uh, this, this, America's been taken over. I mean, it, it's it, it's dangerous, and, and you've been persecuted for no reason. I've seen your court documents. They won't even say why. Your guns are clearly legal. Uh, this is It really scares me that we've gone this far and that other libertarians and conservatives aren't fighting back. How do people visit your YouTube closing comments? Uh, basically, uh, my channel is Warrior, the number four God 13. And um, I'm going to touch off a little bit on what you just said about Homeland Security. And what people don't know about this is that three months before I was apprehended, the FBI and the Department of Homeland Security visited my oldest son in Southern California due to my video. And the mom didn't know her rights, so she left the door open and they stormed in there and they ransacked his room and they tried to get him to confess. To, he does not own firearms. He doesn't have equipment, I have all of his equipment, all of that stuff, but they were trying to start strong arm him into admitting something he Yeah, didn't you're an do. American man who is armed and protecting their family and a hardworking member of society who's politically active and you've been targeted. Yes, yes, and so has my family, yes. Well, we're gonna stand with you. Guys, get him set back up for a full hour later in the week. I wanna open the phones up and brainstorm on this in the next few days. And uh, folks, contact him. What's your email for any lawyers that wanna help you? My email address is housedealer1313 at yahoo.com. And I set up a GoFundMe account with uh, Warrior for God 13, Joe Mendez. If you wanna help, I, I need all the help I can get because I'm first in the ring to fight this people and I, I need as much help as I can get. Absolutely, sir. If we don't stand with you, we are all begging for it. And, and if big banks are already taking houses that they've never even had a deed to that are paid for, none of us are safe. They're already taking all the pension funds. The criminals are robbing the country, the foreign banks. They're getting ready for bail-ins to take over our private bank accounts. It's all being announced, and they want to demonize gun owners ahead of starting a civil war. I want peace. And it's time for the police and military to say no to all this, but citizens have to back them up. Even NSA people are saying, hey, we don't like doing this. It's Congress's fault. And it is Congress's fault. They act like they don't know what's going on because they don't want to get in trouble. We have to restore the republic. God bless you, sir. Thank you, Alex. God bless you. All right. Here is uh, uh, John Bounds' report uh, talking to Austinites uh, while they sign a petition to take everyone's guns. Uh, here it is. They're going to start arming the TSA in, in malls and uh, airports and bus stations, train stations. And so a lot of those guns could go to law abiding TSA agents that need them. By the way, We'd people are signing like while he says guns this. Go to the uh, TSA agents that need them. Yeah. Uh, in the airports and uh, in sporting events that uh, they're unarmed right now and they could be in a lot of danger if there's yeah. any terrorist activity. So. I, and I agree with all that. Uh, do you I'm support just... Lee Leffingwell? Because we've, we, um, we've even made the joke with him uh, that uh, we would melt the guns down and make him a RoboCop uniform to go <laughs> door to door to confiscate those guns. I am 
totally against um, people having guns. Yeah. Period. Some of these people actually have firearms, and some of them have a good amount of firearms. So they're actually safely going door to door and getting those firearms in California. So that's what we want to support here. Making sure that. Every Austinite sign to take right, our absolutely. guns. They are savage authoritarians. Ma'am, do you have a second to sign a petition? It's for peace on the streets. It's an initiative here in Austin, Texas wide. Firearms. It's to reduce firearms, yeah. And, uh, and then we'd also like to support Obama's foreign policy by getting those guns and getting them into the hands of people that actually can use them and have professional experience like. Uh, Syrian rebels or the TSA. Mm -hmm. She's and, signing uh, right there. It says to confiscate all guns in Austin. <clears throat> the TSA is now going into a program where they're going to be armed. So There's a shooting just in my town in Georgia just yesterday. Oh, is that right? Yeah, that's right. Outside of Atlanta. Yeah, yep. theater. Yeah. Yep. Bad. Well, you're helping. So thank you. You guys interested in signing a initiative for peace on the streets? here in Texas. And what we'd like to do is get those guns and uh, get them in the hands of the TSA or the, or, you know, in order for Obama's Syrian uh, rebel policy over there in Syria to uh, get, get those in the hands of the Syrian rebels and um, rather than in the hands of lunatics, you know, that have... Uh, and this guy agrees to give the guns right. to Al-Qaeda right here. All right. Thank you. Take care. Excuse me, do you have a second to sign a petition to keep peace on the streets? Basically an initiative similar to the one zombies. in California where they're uh, going door to door getting guns from people. These people don't deserve freedom. Backgrounds. You know what my no family does though. And, so on. and this country's um, just full of idiots. What we'd like to do is, right, right here is fine. Yeah. What we'd like to do is support Obama's uh, foreign policy initiative in Syria. Oh yeah, is that? Yeah, and uh, get those weapons either into the hands of American agents like the TSA or into the hands of uh, the Syrian rebels that we support um, or uh, into the hands of some other unmentionables such yeah. as Al-Qaeda, <laughs> but uh, we do support them. To continue for signing. Army, so it's good to uh, get those. Who need, them. who need them, yeah, absolutely. The TSA, who they're now arming um, in the airports and so on, just to keep us safer. Hi. So, thank you so much. Of course. <laughs> Take care. <laughs> we'll be right back. Up on Infowars.com, we filed a report uh, Leanne McAdoo got back today from outside St. Louis. The headline is St. Charles Overpass Protest to Impeach Obama. Goes off without a hitch, and that, that's a nice headline. But but I'm going to call the writer that put that out right when the show ends here in 15 minutes, and say, listen, the essence of this is the state police said all over the state you're not allowed to protest on the street corner of the overpass without a permit. It can impede traffic when the state law doesn't say that. And bullied and beat up and choked and arrested people that we had on this week who were going back this week. And hundreds of people showed up this week, and I sent reporters up there, and the state police didn't show up. And there was no wreck on the interstate, except one down the road where a couch fell off a truck and caused a wreck. We've got video of all that. So the headline would be, police who ban protest in Missouri, Obama protest in Missouri back off. Because that's really what that is. And I meant to mention earlier in the broadcast, that's the solution here to these tyrants. When the Missouri State Police come out and say all gun owners are terrorists, as they did five years ago, that's when we first learned about these federal documents that they had, there was laws passed in the state house. they couldn't do that. The governor got in trouble. The, the, the lieutenant governor got in trouble. Now they have truth squads saying you're not allowed to criticize Obama. That's illegal. I've actually played those newscasts here. Just type in Obama truth squads, Missouri. You'll get mainstream newscasts with straight faces going, you do not criticize him and say he's not a Christian, or you will be arrested. You know, stuff like that. I mean, directly out of a dystopian Stephen King novel or something, like The Running Man. So over the top, it's hard to believe. And so I sent uh, two of my reporters up there, and they got back today.
this morning. They were up there yesterday. And we'll have that report tomorrow for you, at least by the nightly news, maybe even during the radio show tomorrow. I'll have that, you know, the video and the audio for folks. But so, so look for that. But that's a victory. They showed back up to say, hey, go ahead. There's more of us now. Arrest us. And then, if, and then you know, 20 of us are there. You arrest some of us. 200 show up. You arrest 200, 5,000 show up. And, and some police chief showed up locally and said they thought it was wrong. We're part of the demonstration. Some other police... Some state police, I'm told, uh, in plain clothes, off-duty show up, said, we support you. So we're here to create a debate within these departments about why are you violating people's rights? These are your rights, too. You really want to grow up in a country like this where you choke people who didn't do anything? Well, there's incredible video. So um, that video is up on Infowars.com, the audio, all of it, the, the, the text articles. St. Charles overpass protest to impeach Obama goes off without hitch. The headline should be, State police who banned Obama protests last week back off this week. Because that's the essence, that's, that's why we went, to see if they would do it again and to stand with these people. That's why we did that. That's why we have this show. It's why we do what we do. By the way, support the broadcast so I can have more reporters, more researchers, more writers. Get the satellite up, links up for the TV show uh, that's about to go syndicated. The studios we're finishing. We're fully maxed out here. The best films, the best Patriot uh, information, the best uh, Patriot apparel, pro Second Amendment, InfoWarsStore.com, InfoWarsHealth.com for the Beyond Tangy Tangerine discounted, uh, just just all of it. InfoWarsHealth.com, InfoWarsStore.com. Subscribe to the magazine, become a PrisonPlanet.tv subscriber. If you believe in what we're doing, please stand with us because it is so creepy. When you see man on the streets nationwide, not just California, not just Austin, Texas, but all over the country, where if you say, for Obama, we're going to kill babies up to age three, they all sign. People that speak perfect English, black, white, Hispanic, doesn't matter, Asian, doesn't matter. Uh, we're going to take all the gun owners, Mark Dice has done this, and put them in forced labor camps or take their gun. Yes, I don't like them. I want to, I mean, these are sick, free, these are enemies. Weird little, you know, welfare shuffling blobs or government workers. They're like, we're going to arrest the gun owners. Yeah, I want to. I mean, just whoa, man. I mean, uh, this is amazing. I mean, if I hate your guts, I won't do anything nasty to you behind your back or even in your face. Imagine just like, yeah, yeah, let's let's give guns to Al Qaeda and let's take all the guns from the citizens. I mean, it's just as long as you say Obama. They will do, and, and talk at an NPR, oh, it's for Obama, we're going to take all the guns, door-to-door -door gun confiscation. They go, uh, oh, and they start doing this weird little dance like they're a bird hypnotized by a snake. They're like, uh, John Bound, you've done a lot of these men on the streets. I mean, that's who you got. That uh, How freaked out, were, were you laughing? Were you about to cry? You look, um, if you watch the video, it looked like you were about to, to, to laugh. What was happening, John Bound? And you start getting used to it. Uh, this one, I wasn't as shocked as I was in the beginning because uh, the first time I did it was with Mark Dice. And it's amazing that... They just uh, out, in out in L.A., out in L.A. Out in L.A. And it's amazing how they just come out of the woodwork. There was only one person that disagreed with me, and it was a World War II veteran. And that I have that video on my own channel. And he, he disagrees with me at the end. He kick sand at me and just, you know, make it. Oh, that's incredible. Stuff. World War II vet stands up against tyranny. Yeah, but Listen, give folks uh, your uh, InfoWars channel, but it needs to be on the main channel. In fact, if you want to stay late, edit that into the other idiots and make the point that only one person, because I know you said one person out of dozens, you know, said, no, we shouldn't take the guns. And it was a World War II vet. That is, inc that is sensational for liberty. The uh, channel is War for Your Mind HD, and it's uh, Alex Jones InfoWars channel. And I am going to go down to Dripping Springs this week and talk to people that actually have guns and know the Constitution. I guarantee Yeah, yeah, just 10 miles from these yeah. mindless authoritarian jellyfish uh, that think they're liberal. Just show the difference. I guarantee it'll be night and day. But, but we'll see if I'm right. And then we'll air that next Sunday here. Sounds good. Voila, there you go. So, I mean... Uh, I saw you kind of got into it. Was it fun to join the Borg and just go, hand over guns, work for Al-Qaeda? Well, um, yeah, you, you you go into that drone mode, you know. Instead of being excited about liberty and let's do something, you, you go into, well, you know, you're ready to just sign. 
sign here, uh, send the guns over. Uh, uh, well, I want to go out like we already did and say, we're going to kill babies up to age three for Obama. Uh, beat their brains out with sledgehammers. They just start signing. Yeah, once they start signing, this is what Mark Dice told me, is that once they start signing, you've got them. They won't admit they're, they're wrong. The they won't admit they're wrong. That's the thing. It, it, like, like someone who wants to be conned, once they're hooked, will never admit they're wrong. It's Stockholm Syndrome. Oh, like, you should go further and say, and then we're going to kill you after we take the guns. They'll still sign. Will you die for Obama? Hey, will you sign here to destroy the United States? Hi, we're going to put gun owners and wood chippers. What, what, you're not liberal? I mean, you should trendy. Uh. And Leanne McAdoo had an idea to give away sheep or, you know, stuffed animal sheep. To yeah, buy some animals. online yeah, and, some then, and then say, out. bring your guns in because it's legal to do a gun buyback. Just say, you know, and, and, and have it there and then give them a step. Or how about actual lamb chops? Of like, this is what happens once you turn your guns in historically. You get chopped up by the wolves like lamb. Here's your lamb chop. Where, where do I saw it? With like some of that, you know, jelly. All right, bro. You know, I didn't have time to get to this. I'm going to do it tomorrow at the start of the 11 a.m. Central, 12 noon Eastern show. Friday, it was 1 p.m., and I was in the break room getting a glass of Joe. And CNN's going, the polar bears are all dying. They can't swim. Uh, the, 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 the Arctic is all melting. I mean, we have the video right now. And they go, look at this satellite shot. And they show during the summer when they always have the northern passage. It's been written about for over a thousand years. It shrinks. In the summer, it gets smaller. In the winter, it gets bigger. You know, like, oh, we've got to have icebreakers. It's the fall to get through the Northern Passage. And they actually say on the piece, you know, the same lie that polar bears can't swim. They're the greatest land animal swimmer. They go out on the ice floes to hunt seal. And their number, I'm going to show all this tomorrow. I've printed all the articles. They're up fivefold from the last census. <laughs> There's never been this many polar bears <laughs> in Northern Russia, Northern Europe, Canada, uh, North Pole. I mean, they are crawling. And they get on there and say, pay Al Gore carbon tax or the polar bears will all die. That's how dumb they think you are. And Obama gets up on TV and says, there's not even an allegation the NSA spying on you. <laughs> when it's all admitted, when it's all on record, they're persecuting the media, whistleblowers, citizens, uh, pro-life groups, uh, Associated Press, uh, members of Congress are tapped to spy on them. I mean, it's all completely illegal. And he gets up there and is so arrogant and smiles about it. These con men get off on lying. My dad would always tell me, grow up, he said, son, there's people who'd rather steal a dollar from you than make a million dollars with you. They love being nasty. They love being double dealing because it's their nature. Because there are no allegations. And I am very confident, knowing the NSA and how they operate, that purposely somebody's out there trying to abuse this program. There you go. Uh, great job of the crew. Thank you, listeners, uh, for all your support. Infowars.com is the main website. I didn't get into George Washington. The DOD is teaching George Washington is bad. Uh, that document is up on Infowars.com right now. Red Link will cover it tomorrow.